So, we've talked about how to approach the MCAT in a way that reduces the stress and anxiety so often associated with this test. We've talked about the importance of avoiding comparison and really spending some time to figure out what is best for you individually. We've talked about how important it is to take practice exams to build your confidence up so that come test date you're ready. But we haven't actually talked about the specific tips and strategies I used while studying that allowed me to get the score that I needed. Well, in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, before we get started, I must say I'm battling a cold right now. No, not the coronavirus, I don't think. Should probably stay home for the next few days, though, just to be safe. But I have my caffeine, so we are going to be good to go. If you're new here, my name is J.R. Smith. I just finished this year's medical school application cycle, and I wanna share with you a few tips that I found useful, including a few key strategies that helped me study for the MCAT. This is part two of a two-part MCAT mini-series under the larger medical school application series that we're in. And if you haven't yet, it's critical to check out that first video where I go over the way to approach the MCAT to get the score you need without the stress you don't. But in this video, we're going to be going over the specific study strategies that I employed, including how I reviewed material, how I took practice exams, and how I reviewed practice exams. So some of you may have checked out my study schedule um, in the last video. I put a link in the description below. I'm going to throw another link in the description below in this video, but I just wanted to take some time to briefly walk through that. So right away you can see that my schedule is mapped out for about 12 and a half weeks or about three months. Um, and again, every day that I was studying, the amount of time I was studying was a very broad range. I was not that type of person to tell myself I was going to study 10 hours a day every day. I knew I would burn myself out and I was just setting myself up for failure. So there were days I didn't even look at MCAT materials and there were days where I studied for up to 8 hours or, or so, especially when I was taking those practice exams or reviewing them. Now again, I did use the Princeton Review books and practice exams as well as some of the materials provided by the AAMC and when you're studying for this exam I do recommend using some form of review materials in about a half a dozen to a dozen practice exams so I use the Princeton Review not an ad um, but you can use things like Kaplan which I've had friends use or you can also just ask friends for used books or go online for those so you don't have to pay full price so first you'll notice that after making my schedule and signing up for the MCAT, the first two days I wanted to walk myself in there, <laughs> not do too much. I actually scheduled a practice exam. And so I know you may be thinking, why would you set yourself up for failure? You're going to schedule a practice exam without even studying yet? You know, it's basically like de developing a pop quiz, knowing about it and not preparing for it and just throwing yourself in the fire. I get that. But, um,. I think it's incredibly important to not only know what you're great at, but also know where your weaknesses are. And I know it's human nature to avoid painful experiences and seeing how little you may know, that doesn't really feel great. But seeing what you don't know can be extremely beneficial and is essential for maximizing your study efficiency. Almost all of the studying is relearning content that you've already learned during your pre-med classes. And even if you were like me and occasionally crammed right before the test, so some of that info went in here and right out, right after the test, um, there will be material that you remember and you're more comfortable with than others. And that's why it's so important to take a practice exam early. You can see, um, you know, where you are really good at, what material you're comfortable with, and then where you need to spend more time on. You can also see here, after I took my practice exam and I reviewed my exam, then you see certain um, subjects, biology chapter one through two, organic chemistry chapter one, physics chapter one. So again, I use Princeton Review. These are the days where I was reviewing material throughout this Princeton Review um, kind of guide using their textbooks. Um, and so I wanted to front load my schedule with reviewing material so that by the end, I can really just be focused on taking and reviewing my practice exams. Now, I would go through these chapters a bit differently based on the material um, that it was, based on if I was comfortable and strong in that subject or not. For example, I was pretty good at biology. I remember some of the basic things like cell metabolism and evolution and, you know, cell biology, things like that, but I barely made it out of organic chemistry alive. You know, it may take me an hour or so to read one chapter of biology, 
but to read that same amount in my organic chemistry textbook, it may have taken three to four hours. And so, again, the amount of time I spent a day studying would vary pretty drastically. And if it was a subject that I needed to really dive in and spend some more time so I can really grasp that content, that would take me longer than just reviewing some of the stuff that I'm already familiar with. Um, and so you can also see that I had my last content review day midway through week nine here. You also notice that up until this point, I ended up taking seven full length practice exams. So that's almost on pace with a practice exam a week. I ended up taking 13 total practice exams and in order to do this many, I had to create my own from the AAMC question packs. Um, so alongside full length practice exams that the AAMC provides, they also have question packs with hundreds of questions pertaining to each section of the MCAT. And with these, you can simulate the exam by doing 50 to 60 questions um, per section for each section. And that's what I did so that I could kind of simulate more tests for myself so I did, wasn't limited to just about half a dozen. I kind of created my own and then applied the same time restraints when I was taking those tests. You also see that I scheduled six days strictly for catching up and doing practice problems. Um, you know, I did not expect to be perfect. So I planned for that and I scheduled days where I was able to either just catch up or if I was already caught up, I could just review some of the practice problems. And again, these, would, these days would uh, vary from spending, you know, 30 minutes just reviewing a few practice problems to two, three, four, five hours if I had to catch up reading chapters and things like that. So for example, if this week right here, November 11th through the 17th, if I just could not get through Psych Chapter 3 right here. On Thursday, I, was able to, I wasn't able to put too much pressure on myself about not getting through that chapter if I just had a bad day or whatever because I knew on Thursday I was going to be able to catch up. That was something that I found that really relieved a lot of that stress and anxiety, especially about missing some of the days. I know med students were so neurotic, we don't like to miss things that we schedule out. But if you plan in your schedule days to catch up, then you don't have to go through the anxiety of worrying about that. You'll also see that I scheduled three days completely off. So you'll see here, and these were days that I absolutely did nothing. I did not let myself look at anything MCAT related which again, for med students, when you're in the grind of something and you feel like you have to be productive, you can't take a day off, this was huge for me. And this, I think, was what prevented that burnout for me personally. Um, and having it written down as a day off, when it actually, when the day came, I was able to find peace in knowing I didn't have to do anything because I scheduled for me not to have to do anything. So I'm not actually falling behind. It's usually that idea of falling behind that gets you know, pre-meds and med students that sense of anxiety. And so those days off that I purposely scheduled was huge for me in, in, in terms of avoiding that burnout and anxiety and the other mental and emotional burdens of studying for this exam. So like I said, I was still able to do a lot of the things that I enjoyed, like binge watching Netflix and Hulu with my wife. Though I may say it is probably a good thing Disney Plus wasn't out yet. That could have been dangerous. But the point is that you don't need to tell yourself you need to study 10 to 12 hours a day for this exam. All that's going to do is set yourself up for failure. And then when you experience that failure, it's going to be demoralizing. Then it's going to be a slippery slope until you're at a place where you can't be as productive and efficient as you need to be for this exam because you're dealing with so much of the mental weight and the pressure and anxiety associated with pitting too much on your shoulders. Pre-med students are usually, you know, type A personalities. And honestly, that's usually what drives a lot of their success. But with that, usually comes an uneasiness when you introduce the words time off. You know, we don't feel good if we're not doing something productive with every waking moment of our being. But if you actually schedule and you write down days that you're going to take time off, you can look at your schedule and know that you're fulfilling what your schedule is saying. You know, which again, pre-meds, neurotic, little A-type personalities, we need to make sure we're checking off our to-do list you can feel fulfilled knowing that you did what you were supposed to do. And it also helps because what you were supposed to do was take time off. Now I do want to take some time to just to briefly mention a tool that I actually didn't use, but I wish I had because I always hear how amazing it is. And that's Khan Academy. 
Khan Academy has a collection of videos dedicated to the MCAT and for visual learners who learn best through watching videos, I recommend using this tool, especially as you're going through your content review, particularly for those sections that you kind of have trouble grasping just from reading it in a textbook. So that brings up a good point. Ultimately, your study habits will change, they'll evolve. Nothing ever goes exactly according to plan, a difficult truth for us medical minds to grasp, but it's essential to learn how to adjust and you're able to kind of put yourself in a position to start that process of developing the ability to adjust early while you're studying for this MCAT. See how you do on a practice exam after committing 70% of your content review to the textbook and 30% to Khan Academy or vice versa or anything in between, and then use your scores on your practice exam as a gauge that tells you what best is working for you individually. So that's how I prepared for this exam. And by no means am I suggesting that this is easy. You know, there were days that I would spend, you know, almost 10 hours studying for this exam. There were days where I was stressed. I could tell you that the last thing you want to do some days on a Saturday evening is be going over and reviewing a practice exam for six hours. But if you want to be a doctor, you're going to have to commit to studying for this test. But that does not mean that it has to be such a horrific process. And actually, you find out a lot about yourself during this process that you can use to build off of. And this growth that you'll experience while studying for this test is only going to benefit you in medical school. I hope this video, as well as my previous video, can be helpful for those who are currently preparing on taking this exam. And for those of you who have already taken the MCAT, share what tips and strategies you had that you found beneficial so that everyone can benefit from all of our experiences. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It's really appreciated. Be sure to subscribe, tap that bell. New videos come in every week. You're not going to want to miss it. We're just getting started in this medical school application series, and I'm super excited to continue to share more tips and strategies that I felt that were useful for me, as well as my entire application for you to be able to use as reference. But until then, keep evolving, and I'll see you guys next time. <coughs> thought, thought it was a sneeze, it wasn't. We're good, we're good.